Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here, and thank you so much for the UN Working Group, especially for the share that put the heart with community on the ground. I can't believe that a transgender person, an intersex transgender person like me, working on the ground, will be able to share the real life stories of my 15 year that I would think that I would be clear from slab case, and then I just recently got one. Um, just to let you know that I like to share with the general information about Thailand situations as our government claimed to be the champion for the Asians to implement the NAPs to follow the UN guiding principle on business and human rights. As you may understand that agricultural and food supply industry um, and also extracting business are one, uh, two of the most uh, majority for a uh, human rights defender to face um, judicial harassment. As you may know, with the uh, Tamagasis case, it's a very uh, well-known case where a company uh, filed uh, complaints uh, against uh, 14 migrant um, labels from Myanmar. And those who support uh, the case, of course, uh, human defenders um, faced a um, series of uh, judicial harassments. Even the former National Human Rights, Human Rights Commission, Kunankana, she shared a post and the court liked stand by hum women human rights defenders stop slap case and then she faced criminal defamation charged. For extracting business as such as gold mining operations. So as you may know that it's uh, mostly is conducted by multi uh, national corporations and continues to, they continue to exhaust uh, and ruin human rights defenders and their ability to protect their own villages from physical, mental, and uh, environmental harms. So, so far, um, there are more than 450 women rights defenders have been subject to uh, judicial harassment by slaps. Since uh, Thailand passed uh, the weak anti-slap legislation in order to show that Thailand first naps uh, comply with the UN guiding principles, there are more than 10 cases already facing slap case. Um, we Manushiya uh, Foundation, once uh, the NAPS has been um, adopted, uh, we conducted the um, national baseline assessment to inform the NAPS to ensure that smart, smart mix is real implemented. Unfortunately, you know, like the first NAPS happened to be broken too, and then we already know that, for example, uh, small and business uh, uh, sectors are not ready to comply, but instead of come up with the innovative measures uh, to ensure that they comply with the international human rights standards, also with the, the actual labor laws, they couldn't even enforce it. In terms of my case, I am gender activist. I fought hard to ensure that uh, the diversity and inclusion is real, you know, and what I face that um, during the, um, when we informed the, national, um, the fighting of our um, national baseline assessment, again, the, the actual NAP still did not mention, you know, even what uh, business sector should do when it's come to the pillar to respect human rights for LGBTI inclusions. And now, it's not, and now today, you know, like with the false uh, narrative about gender and um, DNI, you know, like together with the, the weakened NAPs is now like making our, our government and business sector understood well that they, they actually follow the guideline. And from my experience of over five years that I'm trying to, to try, you know, to experiment, the, maybe NAPs would really help uh, uh, our like LGBTIQ communities and women and you know even disabilities to um, to enter into the world of work with the respect of their dignity and then find out that there are lots of discrimination against them. And when I ask directly to the business sector, have you ever heard about NAPS? They, they said no. They don't mm -hmm. even know or not recognize. So that's why I have no doubt when our government said that they implemented uh, successfully during their, um, the first NAP uh, assessment, but they do checklists, they give training without follow-up, without clear guidance, what, gov uh, what business should do in terms of respect, uh, to respect human rights for all. And until the latest case I helped, um, a CEO of the 
a, a company, I'm sorry, a CEO of the company, you know, like sexually harassed a transgender person. When they took up the case and I denounced his sexual harassment, he sued me back. And because he is, happened to be like a famous politician right now in Bangkok, I faced double pressures. So with the, um, with the slap case I got, it kind of like nearly shut me down because in Thailand, probably I'm the first case uh, LGBTIQ human rights defender to experience this uh, situation. So that's why I like to call for recommendation that you know, I require immediate um, uh, anti-slap laws to be putting in place as well as to ensure that if you don't know how to deal with um, working with human uh, working on the case to ensure that uh, non-discrimination has been putting in place come and work with us instead of paying someone else paying like our consultant company who don't even know how to interpret international human rights laws come and work with us we know exactly what we're going to do thank you so much Well, I like to respond to so many questions, but I would like to leave my final remarks that um, safe space must be created, you know, in the form of meaningful participations. And what I mean is that must, you must pay attention to those, you know, like already affected by your um, business operation and those who are the most at risk, you know, they are vulnerable to, to share their thoughts. When, when I said about the safe space, it means that usually like governments and business sector always work together in lines, like a best friends, you know, and they put us at the front as they are, you know, like frame us or label us as like um, the evil like, who don't want the government, uh, who don't want country to be developed, you know. So just to ensure that, you know, you put us, you have us at the centers of human rights response and hear from us, you know, like, so we know exactly what we want, you know, we, we know what is affect to our community on the ground. We, we know about our livelihood. We, we pay attention a lot on how to interpret international human rights standards to fit our livelihood. So just come and work with us, talk to us, you know, like lower your guard, have us at the center so you, you will see the definite, uh, significant change by your eyes. Thank you. Thank you very much.